I just uploaded a video where I talked about how a regular capacitor can be used to smooth fluctuation in power source voltage. In this video, we're going to look more at using a super capacitor. They store enough energy to power things for a while instead of just brief moments of uh, voltage changes. So we're going to look at losing the uh, power supply altogether, but we want to keep a small load power. In this case, it's going to be an LED with protective resistor. We're going to use 5 volts here, but uh, the exact voltage doesn't matter. You just have to make adjustments to your circuit if you use a different voltage. This super capacitor is rated for 5.5 volts, whereas these large ones are only rated for 2.7 volts. So you'd have to put them in series to handle 5 volts and whatnot. Uh, so be aware, you got to make adjustments. So in any case, let's get to this circuit. So we might as well start with the load in this case to make it easier to wire up. So we have the LED here and then we're going to put the uh, super capacitor on the board. It is polarized and so this side you can see there's a dash and that side there is a plus and so it looks like it'll work best if I leave a gap of uh, two dots in between this uh, jumper there and I don't know where the resistor went oh it's up here so couldn't see it uh, with the uh, breadboard right next to it so in any case we're going to go to two uh, gaps up and then go next to the LED. Of course the LED is polarized. The long lead, the anodes are going to go towards the positive side of the power supply and will also be towards the positive side of the capacitor. Short lead, the cathode, is going to go towards the uh, negative side of the power supply which we have these gray jumpers. So we got that out of the way. Now when we put the capacitor on it will connect where that resistor is and also down there but it's going to block our view so now we're going to go to the shot key down this is another important part of the circuit and this allows power to charge the super capacitor and also to charge or to power the protective resistor and LED the uh, shot key diode is a type of diode, like a rectifier diode, but it's made specially to not block as much voltage because we don't want, we want to charge the supercapacitor as much as we can, but we don't want the uh, supercapacitor, when we turn the power supply off, to run current through the power supply because that's wasted energy. It may not be good for the power supply. So. The best shot key diode I have right now is this, I guess it's 15 amp shot key diode and uh, it blocks about 0.2 volts. So with the 5 volt power supply we should be able to charge the super capacitor to 4.8 volts. As I said before it's rated for 5.5 volts and uh, make sure you don't charge it above what it's rated for. So in any case, the uh, red lead we clamped onto the anode of the shot key down. The black lead here I clamped to the uh, cathode right there and so the anode is going to go towards the positive side of the power supply so I'll just plug that in right there and the cathode is going to go next to the resistor there and so I am pushing everything kind of this way because this fits into the breadboard just fine through the holes other than it doesn't line up perfectly. You either got to push them out a little bit or push them in a little bit. And uh, we'll make sure this goes towards the positive side. But otherwise the leads go into the board pretty easily. But as you can see it's kind of an obnoxious component. So let me make sure it's in the same row. It is. So in any case I discharged this capacitor almost all the way before we did this. Now you can see that uh, we powered the LED and we even got the capacitor high enough where it can power the LED for a little while but now we will turn the power on and let the power run so one thing I forgot to mention you see a resistor here this particular 
capacitor has internal resistance. I uh, jotted some notes down about that, but uh, over here, but it has some internal resistance there, so it limits current enough. Both uh, limits the current so that the power supply still has can provide more current to power the LED, and it also limits current so the power supply is not being overloaded and it also limits how fast the capacitor charges. Now it makes one thing kinda tricky I'll turn the power supply off right now when it has internal resistance is when you're measuring the voltage across it the internal resistance it acts like a voltage divider and so right now we have this uh, res resistor and LED going to ground and you can see the ground rail comes to we got it connected over to the super pass but there you can see we got 2.8 volts more than the 1.6 we need for the LED it's dropping because it's discharging through the resistor and LED as you take current out of a super capacitor its voltage drops linearly based on how much current comes out of course as its voltage drop less current comes out and its voltage drops slower because it's given up less current but uh, the exact voltage depends on how much current comes in or out plus there's leakage and some other small thing but in any case when I hit the power supply we should see a fairly big jump in voltage right there you saw that was really massive actually and uh, now the yeah, voltage went down but yeah it don't look like it takes way too long for this to charge so I think this super capacitor is for farad by the way forgot to mention that I think it has about 30 ohms of internal resistance and it's a large component like as you can see here and uh, so even at 30 ohms it has a lot of area here to dissipate heat so but uh, in any case it should charge up to 4.8 but as I said before the internal resistance acts like a voltage divider and so the voltage builds up across the resistor and the capacitor the internal resistance so those uh, voltages add up until the capacitor gets to the final voltage then there won't be any more voltage across the internal resistance so that's something to be aware of if you're using a capacitor with internal resistance but in any case as you can see it charges really fast and let's uh, turn the power off and you can see the voltage doesn't drop terribly fast it's keeping the LED uh, fairly lit for a while and uh, this will stay lit for a long time because it glows pretty well even with low current so we could even use more resistance to extend that time but the LED will be a little bit brighter over that uh, course of time but in uh, any case that's really it for the using a capacitor, a super capacitor I should say, as a backup power supply. So right now the power's off. The reason why we have the shot key is that uh, I just have this uh, weird jumper here. But I'll plug this into, uh, let's just do it this way. These leads are too big to plug into the board. That's why I got these alligator clips. But I'll put the red jumper there and the black jumper to the super capacitor and now when I connect them together the LED will probably get dimmer no oh, the LED is not really getting any dimmer because uh, just a little bit of current is going through the power supply but as you can see it's lighting up the LED and I don't think that's bad for the power supply but it's a waste of energy so we want all the energy that we can get out of the super capacitor to go through the LED if possible we don't want to waste any through the power supply for no reason so that's why we got the shot key down it does block a little bit of the voltage to charge the super capacitor and also the load will lose a little bit of voltage but it's probably better than the current that's going to go through the power supply in this particular case if uh, you have a power supply that already has a diode or whatever in it then you don't have to worry about that you can just
plug in the supercapacitor directly to the power supply. If the supercapacitor does not limit current, as I said, these do not. Also, they can only be charged to 2.7 volts. So you'd want at least two in series, which actually if you put two of these in series, they, uh, they're probably not 500 farad, they're probably less, and uh, they're not equal. So that's, that's one problem with putting these in series. I'll talk about that in another video. But let's say they're both 500 farad, and you put two of them in series so that uh, you charge to 5 volts when they can handle 5.4 volts then the capacitance actually goes down it's like having a 250 farad capacitor but a 5 volt 250 farad capacitor so it stores about the same amount of energy as one capacitor but you can charge it to twice the voltage and the problem with a lot of circuits is you need a certain amount of voltage of course and so your only option is to put supercapacitors in parallel if they can't meet that voltage but in case you see the LED is uh, a fair bit dimmer now so it's using less current the supercapacitor is going to drain a little bit slower but in uh, any case that's really about all there is to using a supercapacitor as a backup power supply this one's pretty simple because it has internal resistance it's pretty safe if I accidentally uh, shorted it to the power supply, actually this, in this case we purposely shorted it to the power supply, but uh, if I was designing a circuit for one of these, I would test it out first with one of these. And if I accidentally shorted it when I didn't mean to, when I really wanted a resistor there, then uh, this works out nice. Also, there's a lot of power with the bigger capacitors. We don't have to worry about that in this circuit, as I said before. But uh, they take in a lot of current, and a single resistor to the power supply may not be able to provide that amount of current without overheating. You can just put other resistors in parallel with it, and then you just got to make sure this resistor can protect the load from the full power supply, which it has to. But uh, you can keep putting resistors in parallel, the supercapacitors will charge faster, and you may need to do that. And then uh, that will mean there's even less resistance because they're in parallel for the load. So this uh, protective resistor will be working basically on its own for protecting the LED, which is just fine because you can pick the value that is good enough for that. So in any case, I'll go into that in other videos. Hopefully you still found this interesting. Thanks for watching.